Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technology. I'm your host, Orst, and today we are kicking off our Postman Advanced series. Um, if you didn't get a chance to look at the Postman Introduction series, uh, I recommend that you look at the description below and you should be able to look at the playlist where you can see the five videos uh, that I covered on uh, introductory Postman concepts. In Postman uh, Advanced series, we're going to be looking at uh, advanced topics of Postman, such as monitoring, mocking, version control, and many other features. Today, we are starting off with version control. So version control is just like any other source control uh, that you've used uh, or may have used with the um, in development practices. So things like subversion, Git, um, Perforce, um, similar kind of concepts here, but this is a very uh, lightweight protocol or much lighter version uh, of any of those. In particular, I've compared most to Git. Um, and there are three main features that we have with uh, version control in Postman, and they're all centered around collections. So in Postman, you can create a fork, you can merge a fork, or you can pull. And so we're going to cover those right now um, in a example with this Postman echo collection here. Um, one thing to note as well uh, that's a little different is that we don't have the ability to really add notes to our forks. However, we do have the ability to a tag version. So that kind of compensates for that. And, almost the same thing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just get started right now by looking at Postman Echo here and clicking the ellipses. Here, we get to uh, create our first fork. I wanna call this Dev Odyssey. Additionally, we can fork this collection into a personal workspace or a team workspace. So you'll notice once I've forked this collection into this workspace, we actually get a the tag um, or the fork tag that I'll call it um, here to have Odyssey, but it still retains the same name. So now in here, we're going to uh, first demonstrate the pull feature. So what that is, is when any change has made, been made to the original or master collection, we need to pull those down so that we can update the branch to be sure we're working with the latest code. Um, and so what we'll do here to demonstrate that is going into the original Postman echo collection. And we're gonna write pull demo. And we're gonna update. And so in order to see or get those latest changes, we click the ellipses of the forked collection and we do merge changes. So what this does, it directs us to our browser. Um, and in here, you'll see that there's nothing to merge. However, it says the original collection has been modified. So if you go ahead and just pull changes, you don't really get another window, but it'll automatically change what you know is different. So you don't really get to see those until you get to the pull changes section here where we actually have the uh, what changes is highlighted in green. So um, that way you get to uh, review it um, before you actually confirm those changes. And so if you're okay with the changes, you go ahead and click pull changes. The action's complete and then it moves back to the, um, the merge page. So then if I go back to our example here, you'll notice that we still have both of our collections. However, if I go ahead and edit this collection, we see that now it has pull demo in here. So we can notice those, those changes came through. And so while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and demo the merge feature. So in here, instead of pull demo, I will do merge demo and click update. So now they're, um, there's a, a difference between the two and when we go ahead and do the merge again it'll pick up on those differences and then tell us that there are differences to merge and so in this case we're directed right away to this change screen um, where we get to see 
what has changed. So you'll notice in red there is pull, and in green there is merge, which means red is removed and green is added. And obviously demo is still there and never changed, so that's not highlighted. So if you're okay with those changes, you just click merge all changes, and you'll notice that, and even in the last one, I didn't, I didn't show, but at the top here, we get to actually see the direction of the changes. So source to destination or destination to source. So we'll go ahead um, and click merge changes. In this case, we get three different options though. We can merge the changes and the destinations only updated. We can merge an update source. So let's say there were changes on the, on the original end and on the branched end. You can do that and they both get updated. Or you do merge changes and delete source where you merge the changes from the branch, but then the branch is deleted. Uh, this is the change or the option I generally do. And that's because most of the time when I'm merging a branch in, I've already completed my testing and completed any uh, anything I've done um, that I want to push in to the master branch. Um, but obviously, if you're doing it in a um, iterative way or sequential way, um, you would not you know, want to delete everything until you know you're done. So you go ahead and click Merge. And then this set, sends us to the documentation page instead of the other one where we had the Merge page. But however, here now we'll notice that the forked collection is gone. But if we look at uh, editing this, we'll notice that it says Merge Demo now. So that completed successfully. Um, so that really wraps up the, the uh, version control. The last thing that I would add is that we do get to see these changes um, in a change log. And in order to look at that, we go to the collection that we want to view changes on and click that little play button or right hand arrow at the top right hand corner. And then in here, if we click change log, you'll get to see all the changes that have been made. So um, you can scroll down and see anything that's different. And in addition, we get to see um, some diff. So um, this is what's called a diff in Git, but you get to see what exactly changed and what is different uh, in here. Um, additionally, you'll notice that all of them don't have this, this diff. And from my reading of Postman documentation, uh, it is a paid feature to see the, the diff for everything. Um, so while you only get to see it for the latest or a few changes, um, I've noticed scrolling in here, some of them do have it, some of them don't. Um, I believe to see more in-depth changes, that is a paid feature. Um, and so lastly, I mentioned uh, the two things of add version tag. So this is where we get to kind of denote, um, you know, in a quick tag like syntax of what has uh, changed or what we want to call this change. Uh, kind of like change notes, um, but not as, you know, broad. And then here we also have a restore button. And so what restore does is it allows us to back out of those changes um, just in case something is broken or something changed through that. So I'll go ahead and try this out right here and it should change it back to pull demo. And so you'll notice that it says you restored this collection. So we're gonna go ahead and now look at what we have and you see that it says pull demo. So in this case, we've successfully restored it to that prior version. And so that really wraps up the, the features of, of Postman uh, version control. However, I would like to give you a quick example of uh, more power that you can uh, use with the version control system. And so um, in my work, I've used Postman for a while and I've used the Postman API. And so we'll cover that in another video, but with the Postman API and using the actual windows that I've seen or the URLs when doing version control, I was able to create my own pull request system. And so what this do did is that I would fork a collection into a team workspace where everyone can edit it. Um, so another thing to note is that these have permissions on them as well. So if you have, uh, if you're working in a team setting and someone doesn't have permissions on the master or original collection, they will not be able to edit or merge their changes into the uh, master branch. And so in order to circumvent that, I made that pull request feature and I would recreate the URL for the changes that happen. And it would send that URL in an email to that owner of the collection. And then this way, 
when they go ahead and click that link, they get to see those changes on their end. And they can actually create or approve that pull request and merge those changes in as opposed to the person who made those changes, because they didn't have permissions on it. And so this was a really powerful feature that allowed our developers to review changes before they were put in um, to collections that they have owned or worked on. And so it really um, bakes in the idea of reviewing change and approving change. And so uh, ideally, I'd like to put that out on, on GitHub and um, share it with you guys. Uh, I'll just have to recode it in Python versus um, Visual Studio or any other language, but I probably prefer Python. But that wraps really it up. So um, again, there's many more things you can do um, with this if you kind of get um, really creative. Um, and additionally, when you combine the power of the API, which again, we'll cover in another video in this advanced series. And so uh, in the next video, I'm going to look to create uh, a video on mocking. Um, so we're going to cover Postman mocking in depth and really get an idea of the power of mocking um, that we can really help develop our APIs and develop any content um, along with those APIs, such as static pages, um, web pages. And again, that wraps it up. Thank you for following me in this uh, series. If you liked the video, go ahead and click the like button. And if you really like this content, go ahead and click the bell for notifications um, so that you're notified whenever uh, more videos come out like this, especially in this advanced Postman series. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel to hear more. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.